Hello and welcome to a time lapse of my animation of a recent tutorial intro. Going to be a little bit of a different pace with a longer than one minute video. Very exciting. Today we're going to be animating the transformation animation of my character going from the Dachau standard rig into the holiday rig. And we're going to start off by animating the character, followed by actually creating the customized rig, which in fact was the purpose of the tutorial. So this also serves as a longer form demonstration of me actually executing what I was talking about. So at first I am in fact going for a transformation that is a little bit inspired by Animal Crossing. You'll see in this reference video here. The first step I'm going through is very roughly blocking everything out. I should note that I'm not using entirely standard animation practices here in that I'm just directly using splined keyframes. Typically you would use stepped keyframes which creates a more pose to pose experience where you just show the individual static poses with no tweening in between. Uh, but this was a quicker animation I was doing, and so I opted to use this approach. So first, I'm just creating a few of the key poses, including the waving of the wand around. And now you can see that I'm going ahead to actually the stage where I'm turning the entire body around. You'll notice that I'm moving the torso and the legs independently as they are with an IK relationship and then snapping to the set down pose here. Again, very few keyframes, key just trying to space it out in time and trying to get the overall pose. You'll see the focus here is the macroscopic shapes and the positions of the character and not the details like the facial expressions or finger positions. So at the very end, I'm really spending some time to make sure that the character is posed with the right hand positions and so forth really accentuating that final position of the tada position with the hands kind of out, outstretched like that. And now you can see I'm starting to go and kind of tweak the rotational movement itself. That took a little bit to get the timing just right. You'll see in a little bit here, I'm even scaling and moving around some of the keyframes. I'm spending a fair bit of time going back and forth in the dope sheet, which is on the left-hand side there. You can see all the little circle icons are all the keyframes, and I'm toggling in between the summary view, which shows all of the bones, as well as with the isolate selection view, so I can focus on the keyframes of just individually selected bones, and then moving things around accordingly. At this point, it's still fairly rough, but what I'm doing is I am adjusting where I created the initial keyframes and the initial poses and then moving them before or later in time to better match. At this point I'm now starting to work on some of the other details such as the slight bends in the lower arms whereas initially I was focused just on the overall arm position. And now I'm starting to even work on the facial expressions, more of the details moving the eyes as well as the eyelids and the eyebrows and playing it back and forth multiple times to make sure that it looks exactly as I wish. You'll notice that to play it back and forth I'm using a preview range in Blender, a great feature in the timeline that you can see at the bottom which allows the cursor to just repeat back and forth within a selected range even if my overall timeline goes to a much larger range. You can see here I'm doing more adjustments of the mouse position. One thing that works very well to add some character is to not always have your mouth in the exact center of the face or in the default position. So you see I kind of move it from one side of the face to the other, a little bit of asymmetric composition to the facial expressions always tends to go a long ways to add some character and some uniqueness. And here you can see I'm just playing it multiple times over to see if it's exactly what I want to be. Again, this was a rough animation, but nonetheless it suited my purposes. At this point, I'm now setting up the 
rig so that I can create the customized version of the rig. I know this will be hard to follow, but essentially what I am doing here is reconciling with the fact that I've used library linking in my initial animation file. And so what I'm intending to do is to actually create a, another version of my rig, which will then swap the libraries. And so now I'm jumping into the customization of the rig. Admittedly, while I was recording the initial video, I did not actually know what I want to create. So I'm just searching on Skindex for some inspiration. And then eventually I decided on the holiday theme and I came up with a couple of skins that I thought were good inspiration for this. The next step is to then create my vacation skin as a starting point. And then you'll see I spend a fair bit of time just copying the pieces of the rigs that I found and transforming it to fit onto my rig. I'm using Photoshop to do the copying and editing here. Of course, really any editing program could work. You could even use Blender, although it would not be quite as convenient as the image editor. Editing features are not quite as uh, robust for this sort of feature. And so the basic premise is I'm going individual limbs at a time, focusing first on the upper layers. You'll notice that I'm extending my skin to cover all of the bottom layers. So where before I had long sleeves and perhaps jeans, I'm extending the skin colors to be more of the legs and the arms. And then using the pink color of the, the new rig to cover up the arms and legs on the second layer. You can also see how the legs over on the left hand side, I actually used a, an adjustment layer to colorize. You'll find that later I end up doing a similar thing in Blender as well. Again, to make it quick and easy to adjust the colors. And now I've just used the skin swap feature to actually change the skin in Blender. You'll notice here, a little bit embarrassed to say, but I actually was not using a completely neutral base rig. This is a rig that already had extrusions in place and therefore to counteract that, I just scaled in the vertices a little bit more. If this was a fuller production, I would have started from a base rig that did not already have those extrusions. So I wouldn't have to scale in those spaces. Now you can see that I was extruding the shorts out a little bit, although later I'll end up making a secondary layer for more like swim shorts anyways. At this point, I'm just quickly posing the character similar to the end state of my animation so that I can view a representation of what it will look like. But note that this is not the actual animation scene. It's going to be linked into that scene. Now I am extruding extruding the flowers on the shirt to give it a little bit of uh, extra detail. Although when I get to the shirt, you'll find that there were some errors that have to do with the generate faces. I decided that it wasn't worth the effort to clean it up, so I just undid it. Now going into the pants, I'm actually duplicating parts of the existing mesh and then extracting them, separating them into separate objects, and then I am adjusting their UV layouts to create the shorts, but then to make it not clashing with the upper part of the torso, I'm using some adjusted node materials to adjust the hue to give it more of a blue color. And now finally, I'm extracting the flower from one of the other faces of the rig to give me the little flower detail at the top. You'll see that I'm reusing a lot of the geometry that already exists. That's one way to save you time so you're not always starting from a base new file. Again, it can be rough as long as the final thing looks the way that you want it to. And here, this is a detail that has to do with the way that I'm rendering these intro animations. Actually, each feature of the rig has two objects to it. And so that's how I achieve the outline effect you see here. It's actually a material in the background that has back facing visible only. And now you can see I'm using a little bit of wizardry with Python. 
You might otherwise use an add-on or some other front-end features, but here I'm simply replacing the library linked file, which was the non-vacation version of my rig with the path to the vacation version of my rig. And this is a way that I'm able to bring in the rig that I just customized into my scene at the animation. Ultimately, this allows me to render it one time with the animation of the vacation rig and one time with the non-vacation version so that in a video editor, I can do a smooth fade between the two. And here you see just testing it quickly in Blender to see that the final animation looks the way that I like. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. Please let me know in the comments below if this sort of time lapse and commentary is helpful. It's a new experiment for me, so definitely looking for your feedback. And until next time.